Hello, everyone. My name is Mr. Zach, and this is Preschool Storytime at Hudson Public Library. Let's get started. Hello, hello to you and you and you. Hello, hello to you and you and you. A uh, big hello, a uh, small hello, a uh, hi hello. Hello, 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 hello to you and you and you. Welcome, everybody. It is nice to be talking to you all again. All righty, so it's a mystery theme week. Librarians pick. That's what we tend to do if there are five Mondays in a month. So for this one, I chose to talk about special meals. So these are the meals that are the most special to you. So to start out, I've got some books that I wanna to recommend to you. I think you'll have a lot of fun with these ones and they are all available at the Hudson Public Library. All right, so first up we've got Bilal Cook's Doll. And that is by Aisha Saeed. So this one is all about a kid named Bilal making a dish called doll. I know, shocking, but this is uh, Bilal's favorite food in the whole world. And even though this food takes a bit of work and a bit of patience, it's worth it in the end because he can share it with his friends. Wonderful book. All right, now we've got another fun book here, Worms for Lunch by Leonid Gore, or Leonid Gore, I'm not sure. And this one is a lot of fun too. It uh, talks about different animals and what they eat. So this is the meals that are special to these animals. These are the ones that they wanna eat. So like this rabbit right here is gonna have a carrot and this monkey is having a banana, but that's not what this fish would want. So it goes all through these different animals. What do they like having for meals? So what do you like having for meals? There's lots of different things that I like to eat. I love food. Alrighty, so next up is a counting book called One Big Salad, a delicious counting book by Juana Medina. And this book uh, is a fun counting book and you can kind of tell here, they basically take pictures of vegetables and draw cute little faces on them. A uh, really fun book, just a simple one. If you're wanting a good counting book, I'd highly recommend this one. All right, the next one is uh, fun, especially if you are bilingual, you speak Spanish, or if you're wanting to try to get some other languages in there, um, then this one's got some Spanish. It gives you some introductory words, uh, but it's just a fun book overall too. This one is called Vamos, Let's Go to the Market. And this is by Raul the Third. So this is all about going to the market and there is, and so Mercado is what that is in Spanish. There's just some really great vocab words you can pick up in here. And learning other words from a different language is actually really helpful uh, for development for children. Uh, but the illustrations in this book are just absolutely gorgeous too. The style is very unique. Um, and it's all about the kind of cool foods and other things that you can find in a local market. All right, so last one we've got is Fry Bread, a Native American family story. And this is by Kevin Noble Mayard. And this is a really fun book talking all about not just what this food is, but what it represents to this family all of the things, their history, their culture, everything about it, it goes into the making of this dish. Now, I will have to admit, I'm a bit of a sucker for fry bread. I so when somebody says that, that means that they really like it. I love fry bread. I actually make it almost every morning, my own version of it. Mine's not quite what a normal fry bread is. I actually make a sourdough fry bread every morning. Uh, but Really fun story, uh, nice. If you've got a meal that's really special to your family, this one you're gonna love because it talks all about that type of thing. All right, so those are my book picks for you. So 
let's get started with the rest of story time. All right, so we've been sitting here, so I think we need to move a little bit, don't you? Hmm, I think so too. Yep. All right, so I've got my handy dandy die right here, and I've got my list of what, when I roll, we need to do. So every number on this means a different type of activity. So let's see what our first one is. Two, all right, that's an easy one. I think we can do this. So that is touching your toes. So everybody, let's stand up. I'm gonna move my chair out of the way here. All right, so to touch your toes, what you're gonna do is you're gonna try to stand up as straight as you can, and then without bending your back, too much at least, you're going to see if you can touch your toes. So lean forward, keep your legs straight, and see if you can touch your toes. Now, if you can't touch your toes, that is okay. But the more you practice at that, the better you can be. The more you stretch, the more flexible you'll get. All right, next up, I think we're gonna do a puppet show. So this one, like a lot of the ones I'm doing apparently, is also from Aesop. So let's get started. And I'm gonna do a little bit of a twist on this one today. All right, so this is a balloon pump and this is a balloon. All righty, so I've got this nice purple balloon. I wonder if you can figure out what I'm making it into. So I'm gonna pump this up. I really like this pump, by the way, because it pumps when I pull it out and when I pull it in. So I'm gonna pull this up. Oh, wow. My balloon has a hole in it. Let me see if I can still pull that, get that blown up. I think it'll still work. Yeah. So whenever you're making a balloon animal, you always need to leave some amount of space at the end. If you ever see somebody blowing up a balloon animal or you happen to do that yourself, um, the reason you do that is for when you twist it. All right, let's get this off of here. I am no expert at balloon animals, by the way. But just because you're not an expert at something doesn't mean you can't try to do it. Let's get this tied. There we go. So I just tied the knot a little bit above where the hole is. I'm actually gonna let a little bit of air out of it. I think that'll work. All right, so now I'm gonna start twisting. I'm sure this is a lovely sound on your end. Twisting. I've got these little orbs right here. To themselves. Twisting, 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 twisting. So patient waiting while I do this, aren't you? Anybody have any ideas what I'm making yet? I picked purple for a reason. That's a hint.
All righty, and then uh, I've also got this little pipe cleaner that I'm also going to use to help me make this. Being a little more stubborn than when I practiced this earlier. Alrighty, here we go. Let's see if it looks like what I think it looks like. So what we have here is some grapes. I bet you didn't see that one coming. So I didn't want to just use a paper cut out of grapes. I thought it'd be more fun to make it myself and have you with me while I do that. So this is a bunch of grapes. And if you know Aesop, you might already know the one I'm doing. So this is the story of the fox and the grapes. But I thought I'd switch it up a little bit because I've got a really fun dog puppet. So if you like little puppies like I do, then I think you'll like my little change here. All right, so let's start out. Once upon a time, there was a delicious looking bunch of grapes hanging off a vine. That's why I've got these pipe cleaners here. Ha! Ah! <laughs> and they were hanging way up high on a tree. And that's what my arm is right here is a tree. You can pretend, yeah. All right, and then one day, a little doggy walks by. Woof, 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 woof. Oh. And it sees those beautiful, delicious looking grapes. I think that this doggy thinks those look like a really special meal. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. And so that doggy decides it's gonna go jump up and grab those grapes in its mouth. So let's see it try. All right, on three, you gonna try? One, two, three. Oh, oh it didn't quite make it. So I think the doggy's gonna try again. What do you think? And it goes one, two, three. Oh, and it didn't quite get the grapes again. And the doggy tries over and over over again to try to get those delicious looking grapes over and over but sadly the little doggy isn't able to get the grapes hmm and so after spending so much time trying to get those delicious looking grapes hanging from the vine it says to itself hmm you know those grapes i bet they're sour they're not even gonna taste good I'm wasting my time trying to get them. I'm not even gonna bother. And then off the dog went. Alrighty, so now if you remember, every time I do an Aesop story, there is always a lesson. So Aesop, rather than just letting you figure out what the lesson is on your own, Aesop always told you what the lesson is. So I'm gonna do the same since I'm retelling this story. So the lesson from Aesop is that it's easy to get discouraged from things. So that means to feel sad or down about them and to make fun of them because of that. So even though those were delicious looking grapes and they probably would have been really delicious because the dog wasn't able to get at them, the dog decided that they weren't worth it. So they changed their mind and pretended that they were worse than they are. So Aesop's lesson is that you shouldn't do that. Just because you can't get something doesn't mean it's not worth getting. You can always keep trying. All right, so I'm gonna grab a drink here. Ah, delicious water. Just what you need with every meal. All right, let's do another activity. Are you ready? Yeah, I am too. So this time it's a three and that's a squat. So let's get started. 
gonna move my chair. Alrighty, so we've done squats before on here, but just in case you don't know, you're gonna plant your feet right about shoulder level. Put your arms out in front of you. All right, you got them? You got your arms out in front. So then what you're gonna do, keep your back straight, and then you're gonna bend your knees. See if you can go real low to the ground. Yeah, just like that. Let's do a couple. You got it? All right, let's do one more. All right, great job. All right, so now we've got another finger play to do. All righty, so on the subject of food, that always makes me think of gardening. And a classic of gardening is the pea in its pea pod. So let's sing a little song about peas. All righty, you ready? Five little peas pressed in a pod. Five little peas pressed in a pod. So you make a fist. All right. One grew, two grew, and so did the rest. They grew and grew and did not stop. So you're going to stretch your fingers really wide until one day the pod went up. All righty. So then you're gonna clap your hands. So I've done it once, let's do that again. You ready? So you're gonna follow along with my hand actions you see. So five little peas in a pod pressed. Five little peas in a pod pressed. Woo, <laughs> try saying that fast. One grew, two grew, and so did the rest. They all grew and grew and did not stop until one day the pod went pop. All right, let's do it one more time. Five little peas in a pea pod pressed. One grew, two grew, and so did the rest. They grew and grew and did not stop until one day the pod went pop. All righty, I think that was fun. So, all right. Let's do one more activity. Are you ready for it? What do you think we'll get? Mm, let's see. Three again. Wow, that's the first time I've gotten the same one twice in a row. So we're gonna do more squats. All right, do you remember how to do those? So plant your feet right on the ground, put your arms out, and then you are going to Bend your knees, and you might need to lift up your heel just a little bit. And if you can't do that, that is fine. Just move in any way that is fun for you. Same goes for any of the big people watching this too. That's always what's important for getting movement, getting exercise, is just do something that's fun for you and it'll be a lot easier. All right, so now to close out, we're gonna do a reading from our longer book. So we are continuing to read The Velveteen Rabbit by um, Marjorie Williams. All righty. So remember, The Velveteen Rabbit is about a toy rabbit made of velveteen, which is a really soft fabric, sort of like velvet and the rabbit wants to become alive. And we just left the rabbit after last time, the rabbit had met some real rabbits. And the rabbit was starting to feel a little down because the rabbit realized that he wasn't like those other rabbits. But let's see what happens now. Weeks pass and the little rabbit grew old and shabby. You know what shabby means? So if you don't know, shabby means kind of ragged, getting not in great shape. But the boy loved him just as much. He loved him so hard that he loved all his whiskers off and the pink lining to his ears turned gray and his brown spots faded. 
he even began to lose his shape and he scarcely looked like a rabbit anymore except to the boy. To him, he was always beautiful. And that was all that the little rabbit cared about. He didn't mind how he looked to other people because the nursery magic had made him real. And when you are real, shabbiness doesn't matter. And then one day the boy was ill. You know what ill means? It means sick. His face grew flushed and he talked in his sleep and his little body was so hot that it burned the rabbit when he held him close. Strange people came and went in the nursery and a light burned all night and through it all the little velveteen rabbit lay there hidden from sight under the bedclothes and he never stirred for he was afraid that if they found him someone might take him away and he knew that the boy needed him. It was a long weary time for the boy was too ill to play and the little rabbit found it rather dull with nothing to do all day long. But he snuggled down patiently and looked forward to the time when the boy would be well again and they would go out in the garden amongst the flowers and the butterflies and play splendid games. So splendid, do you know what that means? It means really, really good. All right, in the raspberry thicket like they used to. All sorts of delightful things he planned. And while the boy lay half asleep, he crept up close to the pillow and whispered them in his ear. And presently the fever turned and the boy got better. He was able to sit up in bed and look at pictures while the little rabbit cuddled close at his side. And one day they let him get up and dress. That's good, he seems like he's doing better. It was a bright sunny morning and the windows stood wide open. They had carried the boy out onto the balcony wrapped in a shawl and the little rabbit lay tangled up among the bed clothes thinking. The boy was going to the seaside tomorrow. Everything was arranged and now it only remained to carry out the doctor's orders. They talked about it all while the little rabbit lay under the bedclothes with just his head peeping out and listened. The room was to be disinfected. So do you know what disinfected means? It means they're going to get the infection away from it. So they're gonna clean it. Now let's see what that really means for the rabbit though. And all the books and toys that the boy had played with in bed must be burnt. Hurrah, thought the little rabbit, tomorrow I shall go to the seaside. For the boy had often talked of the seaside and he wanted very much to see the big waves coming in and the tiny crabs and the sand castles. Just then, Nana caught sight of him. How about this old bunny, she asked. That, said the doctor, why it's a mass of scarlet fever germs. Burn it at once. What nonsense, get him a new one. He mustn't have that anymore. How does that make you feel that the doctor is saying that? How do you think the rabbit feels about that? Let's see a picture of the rabbit right now. So that's the Velveteen Rabbit. And underneath of the picture, it says anxious times. So do you know what anxious means? It means worried or scared. I think that's what the rabbit is feeling. And so the little rabbit was put into a sack with the old picture books and a lot of rubbish and carried out to the end of the garden behind the fowl house. So that's a place where the fowl or things like chickens or birds are going to be staying. That was a fine place to make a bonfire. Only the gardener was too busy just then to attend to it. He had the potatoes to dig and the green peas to gather. But next morning, he promised to come quite early and burn the whole lot. All righty. I think, what do you think? Is that a good end? Or should we read a little bit more? Hmm. 
I think we can read just a little bit more. Yeah. That night, the boy slept in a different bedroom, and he had a new bunny to sleep with him. It was a splendid bunny, all white plush with real glass eyes. But the boy was too excited to care very much about it. For tomorrow, he was going to the seaside. And that in itself was such a wonderful thing that he could think of nothing else. And while the boy was asleep, dreaming of the seaside, the little rabbit lay among the old picture books in the corner behind the fowl house, and he felt very lonely. The sack had been left untied, and so by wriggling a bit, he was able to get his head through the opening and look out. He was shivering a little, for he had always been used to sleeping in a proper bed, and by this time his coat had worn so thin and threadbare from hugging that it was no longer any protection to him. You know what threadbare means? That's a really cool word. So threadbare means that it's really worn away. It's uh, like if you've got an old coat or a shirt that's so worn that you can start to see through it or that you can start to see the individual threads in it. So each little thread where they're poking through, it's really worn away. It's such a fun word to use. All right. Nearby, he could see the thicket of raspberry canes growing tall and close like a tropical jungle in whose shadow he had played with the boy on bygone mornings. He thought of those long sunlit hours in the garden, how happy they were, and a great sadness came over him. He seemed to see them all pass before him, each more beautiful than the other. The fairy huts in the flower bed, quiet evenings in the wood, when he lay in the bracken and the little ants ran over his paws, the wonderful day when he first knew that he was real. He thought of the skin horse, so wise and gentle, and all that he had told him. So if you don't remember, the skin horse was the other toy who had been there the longest, who was really wise, really smart, and told the Velveteen Rabbit all about becoming real. All right. Of what use was it to be loved and to lose one's beauty and become real if it all ended like this? And a tear, a real tear, trickled down his little shabby velvet nose and fell to the ground. And then a strange thing happened. For where the tear had fallen, a flower grew out of the ground. A mysterious flower. Hmm. What do you think it is? What is this flower? Not at all like any that grew in the garden. It had slender green leaves the color of emeralds. That's like a jewel. Oh, I lost my place. There we are. And in the center of the leaves, a blossom like a golden cup. It was so beautiful that the little rabbit forgot to cry and just lay there watching it. And presently, the blossom opened, and out of it stepped a fairy. I think that is a good place to end. The story gets really interesting after that. All right, I think next time we might end up finishing this one, and then we'll end up starting another one. All right, so thank you, everyone, so much for joining me. My name is Zach. This is Hudson Public Library. This week's theme was special meals. It was the librarian's choice, and that's what I picked. And next week, we're going to have a theme of harvest. So I hope to see you then. Thank you for joining me. Bye.